right, so I saw this article on BountyNetComics.com. Former The Hollywood Reporter at the Matthew Baloney blast Disney for re-upping Kathleen Kennedy's contract. Which is exactly right. And it goes on to explain that he's a former editor of The Hollywood Reporter and a writer at a new subscription-based website, Puck. Matthew Baloney blasted Disney for re-upping Kathleen Kennedy's contract as president of Lucasfilm. And the reasons he gives are the, the ones that, you know, every every right-minded person talks about, you know, that she's made numerous disastrous decisions. You know, the first he points out is that, uh, you know, the litany of botched productions and missed opportunities could form the curriculum for a film school seminar called Franchise Mismanagement. You know, first he talks about the fact that there isn't a single Star Wars film project on track to make it before to release before 2024, so at least five years in between movies. Then he, he talks about the director changes that's going on. Tony Gilroy being brought in to overhaul you know, Gareth Edwards Rogue One, Ron Howard replacing Phil Lord and Chris Miller on Solo. And it talks about Lord and Miller, they won an Oscar that year. You know, then, then he also talks about how she got rid of Colin Trevorrow from the third film in the trilogy, episode nine, and brought J.J. Abrams back to direct The Rise of Skywalker. You know, it, it made money, then it then he talks about how the sequel trilogy bled viewers and dollars as each film was released. Again, you know, talking about episode 7 made $2 billion at the box office. Last Jedi was down to 1.3. Which that right there is a huge warning sign. I mean, that's, that's a tremendous jump. Or, or fall. Fall, I guess I should say. Then episode 9 barely made it over a billion dollars. So you cut it in half over the course of just a hand, you know, a couple movies. You know... Now, then this is the part where it starts to get opinion-based because he talks about the, the creative direction and stuff. And that's where you can kind of be like, well, you know, it's up to interpretation, all that bullshit. Which I agree, I, however, I agree with him. You know, he basically, you know, points out how, you know, R Ruin, or Ryan Johnson, you know, basically killed off Luke Skywalker and the villain Snoke. And, like, not... Not good ways, basically. Like Snoke, you could maybe argue, because that's kind of interesting, because you're like, okay, we thought he was going to be the main badass, but it turns out he's, you know, he's heist. But with Luke Skywalker, they just they treated him like shit, you know? It's freaking ridiculous. But he points out, the original story wasn't mapped out, and nothing really mattered to its overseers, which is exactly right. You can't argue with that. I mean, hell, they even admit to themselves they didn't have a, a script. Then he talks about the, uh, the rock, you know, um, Geode, geode, <laughs> and uh, the High Republic thing, uh, comic series, I guess we'll call it. But anyway, it says that you know, after nearly a decade in charge, it seems clear Kennedy isn't that person and doesn't have that team in place for Star Wars to thrive as a film franchise. You know, if Feige, who is working on his own Star Wars film, can't take on all the movies, we'll see if it actually comes out. And Favreau and Filoni don't want it, then Shapek needs to find some new blood, which is exactly right. I, mean, I don't think there's any question. Now he's backed, you know, Kathleen Kennedy, and she recently got like a three-year extension. But it's like, dude, you guys are not. It's not so much that they're losing money; it's that they're not making as much money as they would be or could be. So I guess in a way that's losing money, but it, it's plain and simple that she's just not the person to be in charge. You know, they need to get somebody else because not only like with with some of the the little woke shit or whatever. You could set that aside. Because, you know, it's, it's possible to have woke things and have it be entertaining still. The problem is, is it takes talent to do that. And they don't care about, well, are you talented? They care about, do you check a box for us? And shit, you know, so it's like, well, we gotta have this, we gotta have that. You know, check, 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 and all this shit. And it's like, no, is it good? Is it entertaining? You know, is it is it devoid of of just the same old tired ass bullshit stories and unlikable characters that we've seen from a lot of this woke stuff? And in most, and in, you know, in this case, no, it's not. Anyway, I go ahead and wrap this up here. I've already gone four and a half minutes talking about this. It's just, I agree absolutely dead on with this guy, with Matthew Baloney, and and, and the, the writer of this article as well. I think most Star Wars fans would agree. Even even those who would disagree about, the, oh, the creative direction is, is fun and interesting or whatever, even if you think that, you still, 
it's not a good it's not a good sign when directors are leaving all the time. You get you don't finish your you don't start and finish with the same director. It's not a good thing when you don't have a movie coming out in forever. Because like when's the next Star Wars movie coming out? Twenty twenty four. You know, that's, I mean, it's a long time. Well, so, now you could say, well, maybe it's a good thing because it'll get to taste of some of that stuff out of their mouth. That's probably one of the reasons that they're thinking of that. But you, still, the best way to get the taste out of people's mouth of all this bad stuff is just have good movies. You know, anyway, like I said, I'll go ahead and wrap this up here. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have a good one.